This is a little video to talk about LiPo batteries, what they are, how they work, how you look after them, safety tips, what all the numbers mean on the front, and different bits and pieces. So, first of all, let's talk about what they are. LiPo stands for Lithium Polymer, or LiPoly. And that's actually the technology inside the battery, and you don't need to worry about that, but what it basically means is you get an awful lot of power out of a very small physical package. This is a, 22, a 2100 milliamp hour pack that you would typically find on something like a uh, T-Rex 400 or a 450, uh, T-Rex 450 or something like a, um, a King or a Belt CP helicopter and this will give you about eight, nine minutes of flight time on a battery of this size. There's an awful lot smaller ones. This is the battery, again, lithium polymer, single cell, and we'll talk about what cells mean in a minute. Battery that's used on a very small helicopter called an MSR. And then you go all the way up to much larger batteries, things like this, which is actually a six cell um, pack, 2600 milliamp power. And this is used in five and 600 class helicopters. And this will probably only give you about five minutes of flight because of the much heavier weight of the machine. Now, as you can tell, lots of difference in size, but the milliamp hour rating between this one and this one is actually almost the same. So why, if this battery is so much bigger, is that 2100 milliamp hours, this thing's two and a half times the size physically, why is it only 2600 milliamp hours and what does that mean? And we'll talk about that. First of all, let's talk about safety. If you search on YouTube, you will find lots of videos showing batteries like this, lithium, lithium polymer LiPoly batteries, going up in flames. But you, what you'll notice about all of those videos is it usually involves somebody punching the battery with a screwdriver or um, a pointed object and, uh, and or short circuiting the thing to make it burst into flames. And that's really how you get these things to burst into flames. You either short circuit them or you get a puncture. If you don't do either of those things, then they're actually pretty safe. The way to store these things is I would always put them inside a tin, if you're gonna have them in the house, um, and always charge them in something like this, which is a live poly bag. And the way this works, there's lots of different versions. This is, just happens to be the one I use. Um, then it allows you to charge the battery with just the leads poking out. And if you are unlucky that something really nasty happens when you're charging the battery, then the, uh, the problems contained in this pack. What you actually find is that the, the thing about fire and LiPo batteries is that the battery itself doesn't tend to start the big fire. What happens when you puncture it is a jet of a very hot gas and lots of smoke escapes from the pack and it's usually something around it that catches fire. It might even be the covering of the battery or it might be something uh, flammable that's actually on the model or that it's sat in or next to. So just respect them and you'll be fine. Um, also make sure that when you're charging them you only charge them at the rated um, value and that you don't discharge them too quickly as well. They should be warm to the touch by the time you've finished using them on a model if they're hot in your hands or they start to puff up, i.e. that this thing looks like you've blown air inside it, then be very suspicious about that battery and look after it. The way to get rid of these batteries is uh, to dunk them in a bucket of salty water and leave that in that salty water for a couple of days. That does two things. One is take all the remaining charge out the pack and secondly it helps to neutralise the chemicals inside so you can put it in the bin. So, let's talk about the numbers. On this pack, there are three numbers. One is 20C, the other one is 2100 milliamp hours, and the last one is the voltage, 11.1 volts. Now the voltage is probably the simplest one, that's the voltage of the pack. But that isn't the voltage of the pack at full charge, that's the voltage of the pack at nominal charge. What you might hear these things talked about is a 3S LiPo, and that all that means is there's actually three lithium polymer cells 
this is a single cell but it's a very very small cell there are three of these things inside this pack one on top of the other okay each of those cells is between three and a half and four point two volts and together that's as you add them up you get eleven point one volts if we think about these numbers uh, if the analogy I use is uh, something like a tank of water and a hose pipe the 2100 milliamp hours is actually how much water or how much power is in this battery okay so you can think of it as 2100 gallons if that makes sense the voltage is how much pressure that water is under okay and the C rating is how quickly you're allowed to pull that water out so a 20C um, rating on a pack like this will allow you to pull 20 times that 2100 milliamp hours at once. So in this case, 20 times 2100 is your maximum that you can pull at any one time. Okay. Similarly, if you look at the 2100 milliamp hours rating, what that means is that you can pull 2100 milliamps over an hour and the pack will be empty. Or you can pull 4200 milliamps in half an hour and the pack will be empty or you can pull 8400 milliamps in 15 minutes and the pack will be empty so it's, it's actually uh, just like in think of plumbing yeah if you have a larger hose attached to the tank that pulls more water out at any one time the tank will empty faster that's all the C rating is about. It's the flow, the maximum flow of energy that you can get out of this battery into the system. The C rating on the battery is only for pulling power out of the battery into the system. The C rating for charging is usually in a data sheet that comes with the battery, but it's safe to assume for most batteries that you can only charge at what's called 1C. I would charge this at 2.1 amps, okay? So the way to do it is just put a decimal point three in from the uh, from the right and that will tell you how many amps you've got to put in. If you look at this one, this one's a 2600 milliamp hour pack. If I'm charging this, then I will put in 2.6 amps, okay? And it will probably take about 40 minutes to charge the pack. The next thing we'll talk about is going to be uh, using the things. Now, LiPo batteries are different from other cells that you might have used in that you don't run them until they're flat. Running them until they're flat is bad news. A fully charged cell in a lithium polymer battery will read 4.2 volts. If you charge it over 4.2 volts, then you're gonna be in trouble. Now, normally you don't have to worry about that because any charger worth its salt, once each cell in the pack and remember there's three three cells in here, so it's a 3S battery, yeah? Once each cell in here gets to 4.2 volts, it will stop charging. So if you put a voltmeter onto this lead and check the battery, you'd actually read 12.6 volts. And that shows you this that this pack is fully charged and ready to go. You would fly it until each of the cells got down to around 3.5, 3.6 volts, but definitely no lower. The way that you actually uh, check that you're not overdoing it with a battery is when you put it onto a battery charger, if you've got a fancy one that actually shows you how many milliamp hours are going back into the pack, you should always aim to put um, no more than 80% of the capacity back into the cell. So if this is a 2100 milliamp hour pack, and for ease of math, let's say it was a 2000 milliamp hour pack, you'd only want to put in um, 1,800 milliamps back in. If you're putting any more in than that, then you're pushing the pack too hard, its life will be shorter, and then you'll then start to see it puffing up as you take it below the voltage that it's comfortable with. The final thing we'll talk about is how to charge these things. There are lots of different types of charger this is probably the most basic this is the kind you tend to get with a ready-to-fly helicopter you put um, a power supply on the side and you plug the balance tap okay into the charger now let's just talk about this for a second the balance tap connects each of the cells individually 
And what the charger does is it supplies current across these wires into the individual cells to charge them up to that 4.2 volts. This thing only supplies about 0.7 of an amp, which is well below the 2.1 amp maximum. And again, just to refresh, you can only charge, unless the pack says otherwise, you can only charge at 1C safely. So I would normally excuse me, charge this at 2.1 amps. This maximum output is, I don't know if you can read that, 0 0.75 amps. This would take probably three times longer to charge this pack. So this is probably going to take an hour and 20, an hour and a half to do it. If I stick this into a charger that can handle it, put it on 2.1 amps, it's going to be charged in around 40 minutes. There are different types of charging and we'll quickly talk about those. There's balancing. Now what balancing does is it charges the pack and then it puts the power into each of these cells so they're all within 0 0.01, 0 0.02 volts and they all read 4.2 volts. A normal charge will charge the pack and put the same amount of energy into each of the cells and bring them up. And I would say that you, you want to balance charge once every five, six times. The rest of the time, if the pack's in good condition, you'll find that a, a normal charge will, uh, will get it to within 0 0.01, 0 0.02 volts anyway. Uh, but it's just good practice to treat your batteries with respect. What I tend to do, this is actually a pack from another model, is I tend to put a white label on them and every time I charge them I just make a note of it so I can keep an, a, 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 an idea of how many flights are on them. Um, I personally like, I've got made up some duff tags, um, any tag that has a, a, a red thing on like this shows it's fully charged, a black tag means it's in storage charge and a blue tag means I've used it a bit, there's some left in it but I have to be careful. I hope that helps, if you have any questions please put them on the comments and I'll try and answer them. Thanks for watching.